Hi, this is Mr. Spohn here, and today we're going to talk about Coulomb's Law. This is a very, very important law in physics and chemistry. Coulomb's Law is an inverse square law, and we'll talk about what that means in a little bit, but it basically describes the electrostatic force. If you've ever walked in a hallway on carpet and touched a doorknob and got shocked or generated a little bit of electricity, in doing so, you felt the electrostatic force. And we all love the electrostatic force. We love electricity. We kind of use it every day. Uh, we all know that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. So we had down here, and if we had two spheres hanging from a string and they were both positively charged, they would repel one another. It's a basic idea of Coulomb's Law. And if you had two negative charges, they would also repel one another because they are like charges. Opposite charges are going to attract. And as we'll see, this is what holds an atom together. We have positively a positively charged nucleus, a bunch of protons in the center of an atom, the hub. And they're holding the electrons to the atom. And the nucleus is what's also going to capture additional electrons and form ions and bonds and other things of that nature. So Coulomb's Law is very, very important even in chemistry. And if you've ever wondered, there's sort of an atomic mystery, if like charges repel, then how does the nucleus stay together? Inside the nucleus of an atom, you basically have a bunch of positively charged protons, and the question is, do they repel or repulse one another? And the answer is absolutely, these protons are repulsing one another. They're trying to force each other as far apart as they possibly can. But one thing you probably never learn, and we kind of, in school, you probably know that there's a force of gravity, and that there's a magnetic and an electric, electrostatic force and really the magnetic and the electrostatic force are kind of the same force just slightly different like two sides of one coin but there's two additional forces you've probably never heard of and one's called the strong nuclear force and that is what holds protons together and there's also the weak nuclear force but there are two additional forces in nature that most people really don't ever talk about in school but that kind of explains that mystery right there so just in case you're ever wondering that there is a there are two other forces of nature that you probably never heard of. So what does it mean to say that Coulomb's Law is an inverse square law? Well, here we have a fancy formula. It might look a little daunting at first, but all we're really saying is the electrostatic force, this F stands for force, the electrostatic force between two charged particles is equal to K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. K is just a constant. This is always going to be the same number, and it's going to have a value that I'll show you in a few slides when you have a, an assignment to do. So it's always just going to be some number, so we don't really have to worry about that too much right now. And Q1, Q2 are just going to be the charge of Q1 and Q2. Just like you can get on a scale to measure your body weight, well, we have scales that can, or probes or sensors that can measure electric charge. And you would get the charge of one particle, get the charge of another particle, and you'd plug those numbers in. And then you'd divide it by r squared, which is simply the distance between the objects. So generally just multiplying k times q1 times q2 and dividing all that by the square of the distance between these two charges. So it looks a little complicated, but generally it's not really that bad once you do a few problems. And in Coulomb's Law, if you get a positive value for f, this is positive, then we say the force is repulsive. And if you get a negative force for a value, we say it's attractive. And explain why. Let's say we had two electrons next to one another. What do like charges do? Well, naturally, they repulse. So electron has a negative one charge and a negative one. And let's just say they're separated by a distance of one meter, to be simple. Negative one times negative one is a positive one. So the force in this case is positive, and that is repulsive. And if we wanted to switch this up, what if we had two protons in there? Well, the charge of a proton is a plus one. Charge of a proton is a plus one, so you'd have two plus ones in there. So let's say they're separated by a distance of one meter again. Plus one times plus one is a positive one. So again, that is going to be a repulsive force. It's positive. And if we had... And if we had a proton 
and then electron in here we'd have a negative one and a positive one and let's say the distance is one meter again negative one times positive one is going to be a negative one over one so in this case the force is attractive so that's a general rule of thumb for coulomb's law a positive force value means that the particles are repulsing and a negative value means they are attracting like this bottom case right here they're going to want to stick together but both of these are going to want to separate via the electrostatic force and it goes without saying that just by looking at this formula the greater the charge the greater the force so we don't have to just deal with electrons and protons but anytime you increase the value of the charge of the particles the value for the force is going to increase so as these particles get bigger in charge value force increases and also there's something to say about the distance mathematically as r gets bigger as you increase the distance between particles the force is going to reduce and as these particles get closer together the force is going to get stronger and stronger by a value of r squared and think about two magnets. When you have two magnets far apart, they're not very strong at all. But as you put them close together, eventually they click because magnets get much, much, much stronger closer together. And the electrostatic force is going to behave in the exact same fashion. And we can kind of put in some fake values to look at this. Let's say you had two particles, charge of one, one, plus one, plus one separated by a distance of one and a total force value is going to equal one in this case one times one divided by one squared is one what happens if you double the charge well if we double the charge of say just one of these objects now it's a plus two times a one plus one over a one now the total value here is going to equal two so if you double the charge you double the force if you triple the charge you then triple the force. There is a linear relationship in this equation between charge and the total force. So there's a linear relationship. It's not going to be the same for distance because distance is proportional to the square of R. We could say that force is proportional, to use the fancy scientific term, to 1 over R squared. And we'll look at what that means in a slide or two. And again, let's say you have two protons close to one another, and we know this force is going to be repulsive. It's going to end up being positive. They're going to want to push away. So let's just say that the proton has a charge of plus one, plus one. And let's say that the proton is, the two protons are separated by a distance of one meter. What is the force acting between them, the repulsive force? Well, that's going to be one times one over one squared, which is going to equal one. So the force value in this case is 1. What happens if we double the distance between the forces? Instead of R being 1 meter, now it's going to be 2 meter. So let's plug in our values. Plus 1 times plus 1 times 2 squared. Well, 1 times 1 is 1. 2 squared is 4. And we're kind of ignoring K when we do this. I probably I should have mentioned it on the last slide because it's a constant value. It's not going to affect these ratios because it's the same in every problem we're doing. If you're actually calculating the actual force of something, you would definitely need to include K, but we're just kind of showing qualitatively what happens to force values based on charge and radius or distance between charges. But the thing to see here is that if you double the distance, force goes down by four times a factor of four. It's one-fourth the value of what it was, not one-half. Not twice as small, but one-fourth as small. And if we increase the radius to 3, well, we have a plus 1, plus 1, and now this is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 squared is 9. Now the force is one-ninth as much. And you could imagine if the radius was 4, it would be 4 squared. It would be one-sixteenth as much. If it was 5, it would be one-twenty-fifth. So that is what an inverse square law is. Force is proportional. Our force is dependent upon 1 over r squared. It's important to note that that is not a linear relationship. It's 
related to the square of r. The distance doubles between two objects, the force goes down by four times as much. And likewise, if the distance between two objects is halved, the force goes up by four times as much. So that's an important aspect of any law of physics or the, when dealing with chemistry that obeys the inverse square law. And we're going to see a couple of other formulas that do that. So it's just important to know that if you double the distance, you reduce the force by four times as much. If you triple the distance, you reduce the force by nine times as much. And the opposite holds true when you're bringing it closer. If you... Oh, actually, yeah. And if you reduce the distance by three times as much, the force should go up by nine times as much. And if you, and so on. So, and if you reduce the distance by two times as much, the force should go up by four times. So the same holds true going the other way, getting closer or further, not to confuse you, but that relationship does hold true. And there are a lot of things that obey the inverse square law. It's not just this electrostatic force. If you've taken freshman physical science or had Mr. Zippone before, you've probably seen this formula. It's Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. And the force of gravity acting between any two objects with mass is also proportional to 1 over r squared or the distance between them. As the distance doubles, the force of gravity is four times as weak. As the distance triples, gravity is nine times as weak. And electrostatic force and grav the gravitational force are not the only ones. In classical physics, the magnetic force could also be described with this 1 over r squared, the intensity of sound. sound the intensity of sound is going to reduce by a factor of 1 over r squared as well. Intensity of light obeys this. Basic inverse square law and a lot of field strength. So the inverse square law and understanding what that means is hugely, it's monumental in understanding a lot of science and a lot of what's going on quantitatively. And I guess there's one way we can look at this in picture form, and this picture represents light being emitted at a source. And if we have light, and this is where radius equals 1, all this light right here is emanating outwards. And as you get to 2R, all this light that's right here is going to spread out over this whole distance. And as you get to 3R, it's got to spread out over this whole distance. And it's reducing. It goes from a value of 1 to 1 fourth as much to 1 ninth at 4R. We would say it's 1 sixteenth at 5R, which is probably going to be coming down here. We would say it's 1 25th. So that's the inverse square law. And the electrostatic force obeys that. Magnetism obeys that sound intensity, light intensity, number of field strengths in science. So it's a very, very important law, this R squared in the denominator of many equations. Very, very important. So it's something you want to at least try to understand. And of course, you now have an assignment based on Coulomb's law on the slideshow you just watched. There are seven questions. The PowerPoint's on the line. Other than that, I hope you have at least some understanding of Coulomb's Law and the electrostatic force and the importance of inverse square laws in science in general and understanding things. This is Mr. Zapone. I'm out.